Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about regulation of the mTOR signaling pathway. So just a quick uh, review on the mTOR signaling pathway. mTOR is known as the mechanistic or mammalian target of rapamycin. And mTOR is critically important in regulating growth, proliferation, and survival. Now mTOR exists in two different complexes, mTOR complex 1 and mTOR complex 2. We'll talk about those later in the lesson. And regulation of mTOR occurs through several mechanisms. mTOR is a nutrient sensor, so many types of nutrients, either nutrient surplus or nutrient um, deficiency, will regulate mTOR in different ways. And also, different types of stress mechanisms also regulate mTOR, and we'll also talk about those in a little bit. So in previous lessons, we've mentioned that mTOR complex 1 is regulated near the lysosomal interface or near the lysosomal membrane, and it's associated with a complex of proteins, RAG proteins or RAG isoforms. There's also a protein known as regulator, and there's also a protein known as REB or RHEB, which activates mTOR complex 1. Now, REB itself is inhibited by tubular sclerosis complex 2 or TSC2, which is located in a larger complex with TSC1. And TSC2 regulates REB through its GTPase activity, so it changes REB GTP to REB GDP. And TSC2 uh, constitutes a major regulatory point in mTOR um, signaling pathway or mTOR signaling regulation. So growth factors are a major regulator of mTOR signaling. Um, remember that mTOR is involved in growth, is involved in proliferation and survival. So growth factors lead to the upregulation or activation of the ras raf mech erc pathway. So it leads to activation of RAS, activation of ERC. If you want a little bit more detail in this pathway, please check my ras raf mech erc pathway video. So nevertheless, growth factors lead to the activation of ERC 1 and 2, and this leads to the inhibition of TSC2 complex. So what that means is that growth factors through their ability to activate the ras raf mech erc pathway lead to the inhibition of TSC2 and remember that TSC2 is an inhibitor of REB so this means that we're inhibiting an inhibitor so we're really activating REB and which means that once we activate REB REB becomes GTP loaded and it leads to the activation of mTOR complex 1 and mTOR signaling. Now Similarly, growth factors also activate P90RSK, which also inhibits TSC2. So overall, growth factors lead to the inhibition of TSC2, which leads to the activation of REB and mTOR complex 1. Now another very important uh, growth factor is insulin. And insulin, as we know, leads to the activation of PI3K through the insulin signaling cascade. If you want more information on this, please check out my insulin signaling video. Now, once PI3K becomes activated, it leads to the activation of PDK1, which ultimately leads to the phosphorylation and activation of AKT. And AKT is also an inhibitor of TSC2. So ultimately, insulin, through its ability to activate AKT, leads to the inhibition of TSC2 and ultimately the activation of REB and mTOR uh, signaling. Now, interestingly, PI3K through the insulin signaling cascade also upregulates and activates mTOR complex 2. And mTOR complex 2 actually itself activates AKT. So in an indirect fashion, mTOR complex 2 leads to the activation of mTOR complex, uh, mTOR complex 1 through its ability to activate AKT. So again, insulin through its ability to activate AKT through PDK1 and mTOR complex 2 inhibits TSC2, which leads to the activation of REB, which leads to the activation of mTOR complex 1 and mTOR signaling. Now that we've learned what activates mTOR complex 1, what inhibits mTOR complex 1? Well, a wide variety of things. So if we think about it, growth factors and um, indicators of energy sufficiency activate mTOR complex 1, but any indicators of energy deficiency would lead to the inhibition of mTOR complex 1, and that's what we have here. So um, kinases like LKB1 or liver kinase B1 and 
AMP or an indicator of energy deficiency leads to the activation of AMPK or, activate, or AMP activated protein kinase, which itself will lead to the activation of TSC2. So again, AMP and LKB1 activate AMPK. Some other things also activate AMPK signaling as well, such as uh, exercise. These will um, lead to the activation of AMP activated protein kinase or AMPK, which leads to the activation of TSC2. Once TSC2 is activated, it leads to the inhibition of Reb and mTOR complex 1 signaling. Now some other um, things that lead to the inhibition of mTOR signaling include cellular stress. And one of the main um, cellular stress mechanisms involves DNA damage. And DNA damage leads to the activation of P53 and red D1. And these both lead um, ultimately to the activation of TSC2. And again, once TSC2 is activated, that leads to inhibition of mTOR complex 1. Um, interestingly, glucose deprivation, so an indicator of energy deficiency, also activates red D1, which ultimately, again, suppresses mTOR signaling. Now another major uh, cellular stressor is hypoxia, and hypoxia activates several things. It's, it activates uh, the same um, enzyme, red D1 or REDD1. It also activates BNIP3, and it also activates PML or promyelocytic leukemia tumor suppressor. These all have different regulatory mechanisms. BNIP inhibits REB, so that would ultimately act like TSC2. So once we inhibit REB, it leads to inhibition of mTOR complex 1 and mTOR signaling. And PML, or promyelocytic leukemia tumor suppressor, inhibits mTOR complex 1 directly. So those are some of the upstream regulators of the mTOR signaling pathway, but some more closely um, associated regulators of mTOR complex 1 involve regulation at um, REB itself. REB, when REB is activated, it can lead to an activation of PLD1 or phospholipase D1, which lead to um, or which leads to an increase in phosphatidic acid concentrations or levels. And it's been found that phosphatidic acid can um, indirectly activate mTOR complex 1. It can't activate mTOR complex 1 um, by itself, but it requires other factors as well. But it does lead to an upregulation or activation of mTOR complex 1. Now, there are other regulatory points in this uh, pathway. One is at the level of RAG proteins or RAG isoforms. Now, the RAG isoforms themselves are regulated by Gator proteins. Now, Gator 1 inhibits um, RAG activity, whereas Gator 2 actually inhibits Gator 1. So, Gator 2 would actually lead to activation of the RAG proteins. And there are two very important amino acids that actually lead to the activation of mTOR complex 1 signaling. And those are arginine. Arginine leads to the inhibition of castor 1, which um, is an inhibitor of Gator 2. So if you think about it, it seems very complex. But again, castor 1, with when there's no arginine, when uh, there's amino acid um, depletion, there's no arginine involved or in the cell, castor 1 inhibits Gator 2. And that means that Gator 2 is not able to inhibit Gator 1, so Gator 1 is in able to inhibit RAG. So without arginine, Gator 2 is inactivated, Gator 1 is activated. But when arginine is around, it's able to bind and inactivate Castor 1, which leads to the activation of Gator 2. When Gator 2 is activated, it leads to the inhibition of Gator 1. So that means that Gator 1 is no longer able to inhibit RAG, and this will lead to the activation of mTOR complex 1 signaling. Now the second amino acid that's very important in RAG activation is leucine. Leucine is a branched chain amino acid, and it actually acts on a uh, leucine sensor, Cestrin-2. Now again, as was the case with Castor-1, Cestrin-2, when there's no leucine around, Cestrin-2 inhibits Gator-2. And again, that would lead to 
uh, Gator 1 being able to inhibit RAG. But again, when leucine's around, leucine is able to inhibit Cestrin 2. This would lead to the activation of Gator 2, and Gator 2 would then be able to inhibit Gator 1, which then would lead to the activation of RAG and mTOR complex signaling. So very complex, um, very complex pathway, but if you just sit down and really try to think through this pathway, you'll be able to understand it a bit better. And when mTOR complex 1 is activated, it leads to a negative feedback inhibition of PI3K. So ultimately, um, for instance, in the signal insulin signaling pathway, mTOR complex 1 actually um, shuts its own signaling down by inhibiting PI3K. And also a related protein, um, P70, P70S6K, which is a downstream target of mTOR complex 1, this also leads to the inhibition of um, proteins uh, upstream in the insulin signaling cascade, which would ultimately lead to a down regulation of mTOR complex 1 signaling. So mTOR complex 1 um, and some of its own downstream um, targets will, lead, will ultimately shut its own signaling off um, after a certain period of time. So it, it um, is involved in a negative feedback inhibition loop. So now that we've learned some of the upstream regulators of the mTOR pathway, there are also regulators within the mTOR complexes. Now, in the mTOR complex 1 or mTOR C1, we've talked about this before in a previous lesson, mTOR protein itself is coupled to a couple of other proteins, MLST8 and Raptor. Now, MLST8 um, is also known as G-beta-L. It is involved in the kinase activity of mTOR, and Raptor is involved in binding to mTOR C1 targets. But there's also a couple of other inhibitory proteins within the complex. One is PRAS40, or proline-rich AKT substrate of 40 kilodaltons, and the other one is DEPTOR, or DEP, domain-containing mTOR interacting protein. And these both will um, ultimately regulate mTOR complex 1 activity. And there is also some regulation of the complex from with um, outside of the complex. AKT, as I mentioned before, can regulate TSC2, but it also directly inhibits PRAS40. And if you imagine again, if you're inhibiting an inhibitor, you're actually activating the complex. So AKT leads to the activation of the mTOR complex. And with regards to mTOR complex 2, again, the main proteins are similarly the same, except in mTOR complex 2, instead of Raptor, there's Richter. But MLST8, or G-beta-L, is again what um, ultimately controls the kinase activity of the mTOR complex. Richter, like Raptor, Richter is um, responsible for binding to mTOR complex 2 targets. And again, in this pathway, DEPTOR is there. DEPTOR is, again, a negative regulator of the mTOR complex 2 pathway, or mTOR complex 2. And the um, other two proteins involved in mTOR complex 2 are PROTOR1 and 2 and MSIN1. And they both also regulate uh, the mTOR complex 2. So other regulators of mTOR complex 2 involve regulation through Richter. The protease is known as caspases, P70S6K, and GSK3 all negatively regulate Richter. So caspases upon um, activation through cleavage, cleave caspases will actually degrade Richter. So they inhibit mTOR complex 2 through degradation of Richter. P70S6K is actually a downstream target of mTOR complex 1. And when mTOR complex 1 activates P70S6K, P70S6K actually um, inhibits Richter. So again, uh, indirectly, mTOR complex 1 um, appears to regulate mTOR complex 2 through P70S6K. And GSK3 is also an inhibitor of Richter as well. And likewise, the caspases, um, uh, in particular caspase 1 and 3, uh, again, upon cleavage of these caspases, once they become activated, uh, cleave caspases um, results uh, in degradation of Raptor in mTOR complex 1. So 
these proteases can regulate the um, mTOR uh, complexes through degradation of some of their subunits. Anyways, guys, that was a lesson on regulation of the mTOR signaling pathway. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.